All right, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the statements from leaders of the EU Parliament, which suggest that we may require an extension of the transition period. Not the sort of extension that has been ruled out by Boris Johnson and that we were calling for earlier this year, but a short one purely to bridge the gap between the end of the year and being able to ratify a trade deal for which it is now too late to do so by the end of the year. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, as we've passed deadline after deadline, we've passed the last one now, uh, they're not even bothering to talk about another one. It's becoming increasingly unlikely that a green deal now can possibly be in place by the end of the transition period. And in an effort to make this crystal clear, leaders of large blocks of MEPs, in other words, representing a large voting block within the EU Parliament, they've stated that they will not ratify any deal in 2020. Don't be ridiculous, they said. We said we wanted six weeks. Two weeks, you're having a laugh. Uh, there's not enough time now. All there is to it. Uh, Philippe Lambert, for example, a leader of the Greens, was reported to have left basically two options. He said, look, we can either, you know, imagine we get a deal within the next couple of weeks, can't be ratified until, you know, it depends when we get it, maybe January, might even be February. Uh, so you can have your no deal consequences for a short period. We could leave the transition period into a no deal Brexit scenario until it's ratified. Um, that might last a few weeks, may last, as I say, into February. That's one option, doesn't sound that great. Or your second option is you can have a short technical extension to the transition period in order to avoid a pointless few weeks of no deal bother on top of the chaos we're already gonna have anyway just because the UK is leaving the customs union. Now the extension wouldn't actually be an extension in the way we'd normally understand it. It's not taking the transition period as it exists and continuing it into next year. That would still end. Um, what it, that's completely out of the question, it seems. What it would take the form of is a completely separate agreement, a different agreement that's all signed, little mini treaty, that basically mirrors the transition period uh, with a very short end date. Similar to something I've talked about in the past when we were wondering if we got into this sort of scenario round about now, would Boris Johnson seek an, uh, an extension to the transition period but call it something else, like an implementation period. Of course, he'd have to have a deal in place for that to happen. But then we're talking about something where you'd need a deal in place. Um, so it would be an extension to the transition period, but it'd be called something else. It'd be called an implementation period. Except this one wouldn't be politically difficult for Boris Johnson. Just extending the transition period as it stood couldn't be done because he'd promised we were leaving. He promised we were leaving the customs union and all the rest of it that we're going to have this final date. We're not going to keep extending and extending and extending like Theresa May did. Um, so, and the other thing is, of course, this would only apply in the event of a deal being agreed. Because if a deal is agreed, then who on earth is really going to want us to have a month or so of no deal mess? Because even those who try and say, or even believe that we will be fine in a no deal outcome, they're not seriously going to argue that the no deal is good in itself. You know, besides, given that Boris Johnson has tried to say that we can absolutely cope in the event of a no-deal Brexit, I've got plans. I've got plans to deal with all the problems. Oh, good, Prime Minister. Can you tell us what they are? Uh, no, 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 no. You'll just have to wait and see. Well, can we just have a little sneaky preview? No, 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 no. It's all secret. So why on earth would you go to all the trouble of agreeing a deal in order to pr forever preserve the idea that he did have plans in place to cope with it, only to show everyone that actually he didn't at all. Now, if we agree a deal and the EU Parliament are more than happy for this technical extension, which benefits the EU as much as the UK anyway, then that is what will happen. However, in amongst this news, there was also another point brought up so this is what the EU's Parliament's position is, or, you know, leaders of blocs that are large enough to have a say on behalf of the EU Parliament. They're saying, we're not going to ratify a deal in 2020. Forget about that. You've left it too late. That means it's definitely a no deal scenario at the end of this year, even if we agree a deal in the next couple of weeks. But you can have a small agreement to copy the extension 
uh, the transition period uh, you know terms to bridge the gap if you like we can do that that's not a problem we're okay with that in fact that would be a good thing however technically speaking this sequence is not certain from a legal point of view just because groups within the EU Parliament say so so the EU Council which is made up of remember governments of member states as well as a few others uh, could temporarily apply any agreement without the EU's Parliament's approval you know the Parliament still needs to ratify it later it's not like you can implement the deal and bypass the EU Parliament because the EU is democratic you see they don't bypass their Parliament but what it would mean is there's no need to get a technical extension we could agree a deal even on New Year's Eve and the EU Council, if they were so willing, could say, right, we're happy with this now. We'll just we're going with it now. And it would be provisionally put in place. Now, if the EU Parliament decided to vote it down and they said, no, we're not happy with this, then it would cease to, to, to be, of course. Um, but, you know, you, you don't need the bridging thing is what I'm saying from a legal point of view. However, that is just the technical legal position. Politically, it would create a certain amount of friction because it would represent bypassing the European Parliament. It would represent a public narrative of we, yeah, we're taking for granted that the EU Parliament will pass this, so we're just going to implement it anyway, and we'll let them rubber stamp it later. Now, <clears throat> a lot of MEPs aren't going to really like that sort of attitude. In fact, they don't because, like, hang on, you seem to be taking our approval for granted here. So the Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, has apparently said that this will not happen. They're not going to do that. It will need to be ratified by the EU Parliament before it is implemented. So it's although it's legally possible to just implement it straight away, uh, and the UK government would obviously prefer that route, absolutely prefer that route, because to not do so means effectively extending their stay in the customs union beyond the end of this year. Now, Boris Johnson promised that would not happen. Um, but it does seem that from the EU's point of view, the way it's going to play out is in line with what those large voting blocs in the European Parliament said it would. Like I said, Boris Johnson did promise we'd be leaving the EU's customs union at the end of this year, come what may. Um, but, you know, if he has a deal arranged, there aren't actually going to be serious complaints about extending it, um, you know, just by a little bit in order to save businesses some extra pay. There'll be no political fallout from that. So I don't see him wringing his hands over the prospect. That's not going to be an issue. Of course, all of this assumes that we do arrange a deal in the next two weeks now. So what are the prospects of that? Well, I've said for a month or so now that I am perfectly satisfied that Boris Johnson genuinely wants a deal. I think he's putting in too much effort for such a lazy man for it all just to be a show. Yes, I understand he needs to show that he wants to deal, but I just think he's, he's doing more than someone of his laziness would do. Uh, backing down on the principle of the EU being able to take corrective action against diverging standards was another sign this week. I discussed that yesterday. But then you also see extra difficulties thrown in. So I talked recently about how the pro-Brexit media in the UK were trying to say that the EU were changing their demands. Oh, they're, they're bringing in new demands, they said, the weekend before last. Of course, they couldn't name a single demand that was new. This is because there weren't any. But the way these fascists work is they cover up their own underhand behaviour by accusing the other side of doing so before they do it. So you can see how this works. You accuse one side of doing all these terrible things. I like, no, we're not. And then they do it, and then the other side accuses them, and it muddies the water. You know, so they're committing those offences and casual observers just conclude, well, both sides are as bad as each other, really, aren't they? No. But th that's how it looks. Because just a couple of days, coincidentally, after these claims, the UK side were changing the goalposts on fishing. You know, that thing that contributes almost nothing to the UK economy, that the government pretend they'll sacrifice the other 99.9% .9 of the economy for. Well, now the UK side has brought up even more new proposals for fishing, you know, which would not on the face of it be acceptable to, certainly it's been reported to Spain or the Netherlands. And it's about where fish that's caught in British waters may be landed. Now, 
quite a lot of it is landed in Spain or the Netherlands, for example. Um, now we've already, and, and the UK side wants actually it to be landed in Britain first, processed in Britain and then sent wherever. Now, here we are, we've already passed all reasonable deadlines for agreeing a deal in time, but we're continuing to talk anyway. And, and if there's gonna be any new positions, and of course to get a deal there has to be new positions, potentially from both sides, it should be towards each other, not away. I mean, you, when it comes to any issue, at this point in negotiations, when it comes to a particular issue, you either stand firm on an issue, which of course risks no deal at all, or you move towards a common position to get a deal. If you try moving even further away, then what message is that sending out? Not that you want a deal, if I'm honest. I mean, why didn't they bring up these proposals over half a year ago? But remember, we're dealing with a complete imbecile in Boris Johnson from a, you know, or should we say at the very least completely naive of the process. He may not be doing this because he doesn't want a deal. This may not be him putting things in the way to block a deal. After all, to block a deal, all he had to do was not concede anything to the EU. He's been conceding at a rate of once a week at least now. All he had to do was just stand firm. He didn't have to move away. You know, we're already too far away for a deal. He just had to stay there. You know, I think he may be doing it because he's aware he wants a deal. He genuinely wants a deal and he genuinely intends to get a deal. And he's aware that he's backing down on an awful lot now. You know, the EU didn't blink like he thought. So he's backing down on quite a lot of things and he wants to get a quick win in order to disguise his capitulation. That's what I think. Maybe he thinks that although this landing proposal is in favour of the UK, and yeah, he probably gets that it's going to irk a couple of member states, he knows that fishing is not that important to the UK economy. He'll know that fundamentally it's not that much of a deal to others as well. And he'll potentially think that he can get agreement on this as long as he backs down on everything else, can I at least have this? That way, he claims to he claims a major victory on an EU concession on fishing, and it would represent an EU concession on fishing, which Brexiteers, who have no connection with our fishing industry at all, have been convinced is somehow really important. And the EU gets their deal with the UK, which will largely favour them anyway. But with no more deadlines coming up other than the definite one of 31st of December, we will just have to play this one out and keep an eye on statements from either side to see if we can see any little chinks there. But I really do think he wants a deal. I think he understands the terrible consequences to him personally of not getting one. And so I think he will ultimately agree to whatever is needed to satisfy the EU. I just think that the issue at the moment is he feels he needs a victory for back home, even if it's something completely stupid. He's basically just trying to get something that he can get most of his MPs on board with. At the moment, a lot of MPs, although they want a deal, they're not really sure about the sort of deal that's emerging. As soon as he can get something that the vast majority of his MPs will get behind, I think the deal will fall into place immediately. But those are my thoughts. We'll have to wait and see. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.